You're listening to the Angry Marks Podcast Network. are just nine days away from Wrestlemania. Now the WWE should be making such a big deal about this. A lot of people who are listening and do podcasts and shows here on the Anger Marks Podcast Network aren't too thrilled about it. Some are. But we here at the SmackDown Rundown, we are going to discuss all of that. I am your host for the evening, Nikolai, and I am joined once again by my co-host, King J. The king has arrived. And not only that, but we have our special guest of the evening and part-time co-host Sierra on the line with us. Say hi, Sierra, and I'm sure your Pandora wants to say hi as well. Hello. Actually, she's pretty pissed. (laughs) I don't know why. Well, if it has anything to do with Daniel Bryan or... Any of the Bella Twins, I'm sure there's no explanation needed. Yeah, the claws are out, and I'm terrified. What did you do? I didn't do anything to her. Somebody else did. Mm. Oh, Mm. boy. Well, I'm sure the claws are out in the backstage area and the and in the Divas locker room. But before we get to all that, I also want to shout out our producer, Killer Kev, holding it down, making sure this show runs smooth. So what do you guys say we get this show on the road? Let's do it. Now, let me get, uh, Jeff, your opinion. What did you think of SmackDown tonight? SmackDown was good tonight. Um... There were some parts that could have been left off and other parts that should have been longer. Um, it was a good build to Mania. Now, Sierra, let me ask you, um, do you feel this had any any way to persuade people who aren't looking into buying Mania? Did it, ha- did it have anything going for it this week? In hmm. some parts it did, in some parts... It didn't really hit the nail to go home, make you actually want to sit there and watch it. All right. Well, the first segment of the night saw Daniel Bryan sort of in, like, almost he was, like, interviewing AJ in the ring. Or he had had some scripted comments for her to recite. And a lot of that could have been left out. We really didn't need to hear all that about them spooning and loving to cuddle. Oh, God. What the hell? It just got (laughs) worse. It just. Daniel Bryan's soft lips. Really, this had no place. Okay, it started off. AJ's talking about him having soft lips. And I'm like, okay, can this get any more awkward? And she's like, and we also spoon. And I'm like, what the fuck is going on? I was like, wait, why are you? That's not PG. <laughs> what the hell? Well, it's a little more PG than if they were to say we hump at night. You might True. as well. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I don't know. It. Just didn't need a place on SmackDown, and then I swear he was about to go Ike Turner on her when she's like, Danny. Yeah, she slipped and called him Danny, and Daniel Bryan didn't waste any time telling her, I told you not to call me Danny in public. It's Daniel. So, okay, we've hit a hot button with him. Now we know what to do to get him pissed. But it's, they actually mirrored, like, the immature high school couple 
where the girl's like, oh my god, he's like so cute, and we like totally spooned last night. And she's like, Danny, and he's like, don't call me Danny in front of the boys. Yeah, that's, that's what it felt like, but at the same time, he's sitting there like, she's going long-winded, he's looking at her like, wait till we get home, wait till we get back to <laughs> I'm gonna give you something to be long-winded about. Oh, God. Well, you know if it was, you know if it was one of us, and you know what I mean by that. Yes, she would have got slapped as soon as she got backstage. Yeah, and he whispered something in her ear, and she had to say, "Daniel Bryan is a great lover." Oh, what? The fuck? <laughs> <laughs> Where is this going? Nowhere but down. <laughs> it just well, got so awkward more and more. And, uh. Well, he finally had AJ say that he will beat Sheamus at WrestleMania and become the greatest of all time. And I'm sure those are his words. But Sheamus does come out and jokes about it. Says he threw up in his mouth before he came out. And then he calls Daniel Bryan Danny Boy. To which the crowd responded with. Then eventually he said, since you don't like being called Danny, I'm sure you won't like being called former World Heavyweight Champion. At WrestleMania, I'm going to kick your teeth down your throat. Now, out of all the big main event matches at WrestleMania, this still feels like the weakest one of all. Because... There's just no animosity. I don't feel like there's anything going for them. And yet, these guys have had more contact than the other three. CM Punk, Jericho, hardly any contact. Rock and Cena, no contact. Taker and Triple H, no contact. But this still feels weaker. I don't know. Can someone explain this to me? I don't see why... Anybody would be interested in Daniel Bryan versus Sheamus. I was at first, but it's kind of like it's died down. I haven't felt anything to persuade me to to look forward to this match. Um, I mean, it has a good build, but at the same time, I don't know. There's something off about it. I don't know what it is, but I feel like there's something off about it. And it came out later that Randy Orton said his match was more important and bigger than the world title match. So that just goes to show that even the boys in the back don't give a damn about their own brand's title match. I don't know what they could do to make it more important with only having a week left, but they kind of need to do something. Hmm. I don't know. See, for me, I think it's because Seamus is usually known for being hot-tempered and intense in the ring. But when he gives promos against Daniel Bryan, it just feels like he's joking a lot and that he's not serious about it. Yeah, I can see that. Because he's, like, calling him Danny Boy and saying he needs to wear a schoolgirl outfit and stuff like that is kind of making it like the joke match. We already have a match at WrestleMania as the joke match, but we'll get into that a little bit later. Wait, which one? Because there's so many. (laughs) (laughs) Well, like I said, we'll we'll get into that a little bit later. First, I want to talk about uh, Yokozuna was officially announced to be inducted into the 2012 Hall of Fame. About time. Yeah, I'm happy about that. I mean, I thought he would have already been in there. I'm more surprised that he's not in the Hall of Fame already. I'm surprised right. they are inducting him. Now, why do you say that? I don't know. I just never thought that they would give him that honor. Because, you know, over the years, you hardly hear anything about Yokozuna from them. 
you know, they hardly mention him. And so it's just like, I don't know if they just try to ignore anything involving him. But then now it's just like, oh, they're inducting him. You know, it's one of those things of you just don't see it coming. I can see that. I mean, they do kind of stray away from talking about him until, like, say the Usos give a random promo and they talk about their family lineage. Other than that, you don't hear or see too much about him, which, in a way, is kind of sad. Which I don't understand because, you know, he's never done anything, you know, to get in trouble or anything worse that we've seen from other people that's been inducted in there. And, I mean, he's one of the big guys, one of the real big guys that could still fucking move in the ring. And you would think that they always trumpet that, but they don't. And I don't get why. Yeah, that and that he was part of a few big angles while he was in the company. Yeah. You know, it's funny you mentioned the Usos because it's possible that Rikishi and his sons, the Usos, could induct him into the Hall of Fame. I read something earlier and it says that they are, quote unquote, officially announced to do it. Because WWE released the track listing for the Hall of Fame music album and Rikishi's theme is one of them. Well, it would be right by letting the family do it. Right. And if they didn't do that, then I would have seen someone like Mr. Fuji induct him. That's what I said last night. I said, where is Mr. Fuji? <laughs> I know he can get there. Say you know, something. In the past few years, they've announced who's inducting who into the Hall of Fame. This year, they have not done it at all. Like They usually announce it on TV when they give the video package, but nothing this year has said anything about who's inducting who. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you have to like look online on the quote unquote dirt sheets to find out who's inducting who. And even mm-hmm. then, they're not 100% sure, but it's come out like later on, like in the later part of this week, that Dusty's inducting the Four Horsemen. Which makes sense. Mm-hmm. Christian's inducting Edge, which clearly made sense. Makes sense. Um, JBL and Farouk. Yeah. A lot of damn sense. (laughs) See, I don't know why I'm being picky about it, but I kind of want, I kind of wanted Farouk and Teddy to both be inducted in the same Hall of Fame class. I don't know if I'm being nitpicky or I just think it's time that he goes into because he's done so much. True. Yeah, I I figured they were going to put Teddy in this year because, as we all see, his on-screen character, I don't know if if they're going with this whole legit thing that they might take him off TV or his role is being downsized. But at this point, if he wanted to get off TV, take him off, induct him. You know, he's done enough for the business. He should go in, you know. But I don't know. It's just... Like they each year they pick some guys and they're like, No, we're putting him in this year. This guy can wait. And then they wait and wait and wait and wait until yeah. it's too late. You know, and I just don't get like like you said about where they don't even mention who's inducting who. I think they do it for the reasons of where they used to always say so and so is inducting this guy into the Hall of Fame, and everybody be like, "What? Why is he inducting him? That doesn't make any sense." Maybe they don't want the backlash from the crowd; they just want to put it out online. Well, I wonder if this also because Maybe. oh, it, it could also be because uh, the Hall of Fame is not being televised on USA this year before WrestleMania. Yeah, the word the word is they're going to air it. Either uh, the night after Wrestle uh, Raw, you know, either mm-hmm. that or or before Raw. Either way, it could be the day after. Yeah, I heard that they're doing it the 
night of Raw, only an hour of it, so we're only going to see like two or three minutes of each person's speech. You know what I always said when they do that Hall of Fame for our, what is the fucking point if you're giving me just an hour? Exactly. <laughs> just take it off. Just just take it off TV. Just, come on. I, Make I me think buy the DVD. I, I think it's just to wet everybody's taste buds to buy WrestleMania on DVD to get the whole Hall of Fame ceremony on there. Well, well I like to tease more. I don't like the a little bit of tease, then you take it away. <laughs> the, but the funny thing is, I heard also, is that everyone got a time limit for how long they can talk. <laughs> so they gave Edge 10 minutes. Um, I think Mike Tyson got like six minutes. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Because I'm not in the mood to read subtitles while he's talking because we all know he talks like he got a mouthful of shit. No, I think the subtitles come in when Dusty's talking because I don't know what the <laughs> fuck Dusty be saying. <laughs> That's the sad thing. I have no clue what Dusty be saying but I co-sign half of what he's saying. <laughs> you know, I watch those Legends of Wrestling things they do, those round tables that he does. When Dusty's on there, I don't know a word I don't know from a can of paint what he is saying. Cause, and he just goes on and on and on. I don't know what he's saying. So thank God they <laughs> gave him time stamps to stick to. They gave the four horsemen ten minutes as a whole. Oh, dear God. Arn is going to get up there and pray and pray <laughs> and pray. <laughs> Well, we go from the Hall of Fame to the Hall of Pain, where Mark Henry just destroyed our truth in a one-on-one match. And poor little Jimmy couldn't help him at all. Oh, God. Before this match, before this match, our truth comes out there slapping thighs (laughs) and bumping and holding hands with (laughs) something. <laughs> I couldn't see if he ain't a crackhead I don't know what he is I couldn't see it but apparently it was something there <laughs> that was hilarious I was laughing at that cause he held hands with it on the way to the ring even held down the rope for it to get in the ring <laughs> he was coming down the ramp skipping skipping <laughs> I was laughing. What in the world? Like, <laughs> he, I don't want to give in to what he does, but at the same time, it's so crazy and so out there that it's like, I'm just going to let him do what he do. I it's mean, so ridiculous, I can't stop laughing about it. Yes, it is, because um, he's done crazy and ridiculous stuff of the spiders and little Jimmy and stuff, but this was just like the ultimate of like, what the fuck? <laughs> that was awesome. <laughs> I, I seriously was like, is somebody there or is he fucking with my mind? Because <laughs> I didn't see it. Oh, man. Oh, wow. Maybe he was coming to the ring with Lillian Garcia's pride. <laughs> I don't know. Or her talent. Something. But, anyways, Mark Henry just basically killed him. He did. I was like, yeah, that was a massacre. I might like, normally I don't condone black on black, but I was like, Mark needs a win. Just beat him, whoever. <laughs> well, that actually leads to what I had mentioned earlier, which will be the joke match of WrestleMania. Team Teddy, Team Johnny. Backstage, we saw Zack Ryder still begging and pleading to Teddy Long to put him on the team. And in there was Kofi, Santino, and Oksana. Zack got Hornswoggle to show up waving a blue flag with Teddy Long's face on it to be their official mascot. 
So Teddy Long said, no, that's not big enough. So speaking of big, he brings in the tree, a.k.a. Great Kali. And Zach tells him if Teddy Long puts him on his team, then Great Kali is down. <sighs> that was just a circus of a segment. Uh. Uh. Yeah. I, I, I'm confused. We have Teddy Long, who still says phrases and words from 1998. We have Kofi Kingston. 1996. Is, yes. We have Kofi Kingston that's from Ghana, but portrays a Jamaican. Mm-hmm. We have Aksana, who is just there. Lithuanian and doesn't talk. And we have Santino. She's better has, not talking. Yes, thank you, Jesus. We have Santino that has a cobra for an arm. Zack Ryder, who unbeknownst to me, is fully uninjured. Hornswoggle, who I thought was killed a few weeks ago, is alive. And Kali. Woo, woo, woo. You know it. What the hell is going on on SmackDown? This is who they're trying to make me think um, I'm going to cheer for as you're representing your team? Hell no. Of all people on SmackDown, this is who you pick? Which leads me to believe that Teddy Long is going to lose at WrestleMania. Why isn't Justin Gabriel anywhere on this team? It could have been worse. I mean... I'm trying to look at the worst case scenario. He could have picked um who's the fat boy with um who can't win a match? Who? Ezekiel Jackson? Yeah, that fool. Well he look, could, I, I would even cheer him. for Zeke. I would cheer it for Zeke. Zeke or Kali? Which one? Oh, well most definitely I would pick Ezekiel Jackson. Ex- I, exactly. I would, I would actually, pick. I would actually go with Kali because he can win a match. No, no, <laughs> hell Ship no. Him back to India. Zeke has not won a match in 2012. I don't care. He's standing still on the apron. He's not doing a thing. <laughs> He's gonna have to get in the ring eventually. Oh no, wait, it's not elimination. What is this? Sudden death? Oh Jesus! Yeah. Oh, God, that means clusterfuck. A.K.A. Vicky's going to be there. John Laurinaitis. Okay, Suspect. And we... Them yeah. other fools. Oksana, Teddy Long, Hornswoggle. His fools. Oh my Anybody god. trying to see all that. It's going to uh, be a circus. It, it really is. It really is. is. <laughs> and, you know, and you know what's bad? This is probably what they would end up having the divas do. If they had it. Any interest in putting the Divas on the pay per view? And you know what else? I seriously see a freaking brawl breaking out during this match. Oh yeah, it's gonna happen if it's oh, not yeah. elimination. If it's not elimination and it's six on six, you're gonna have the usual clusterfuck. Or what we're gonna see is someone hits their finisher. And then they get hit with a finisher, and then repeat, repeat, repeat until one man is standing. And then the first guy who was hit gets the last laugh. And that person will most likely be from Team Johnny. <clears throat> because if you look at that team, David Otunga is the captain with, as of stands right now, four former world heavyweight champions. Look at Team Teddy. Only the great Kali is a former world champion. You know, it, it's the bad thing is like Team Johnny, even though they have Otunga as captain and you're like, why is he captain? That team is stacked. Like the it is, people it's on ridiculous. that team the people on the team, you got Jack Swagger, Don Ziggler, um who else? Christian Christian. Mark um, Henry. Mark Henry, 
and apparently Alberto Del Rio is going to be on there. Former world champion. That team is stacked. Teddy's pre- team. It's just like let's just throw the Misfits in Kingston action. in here. Yeah, Teddy's it's like the Misfits in Action 2.0. And yeah, Team Teddy looks like a bunch of jokes if you look at it because neither of them, not one member from Team Teddy, will be looked at as a main eventer. And isn't Drew McIntyre in this somewhere? Or no? No. He won't be on Team Teddy, that's for sure. You know what? I seriously love if they had put him on Team Johnny. Yeah. I I mean, think about it. He has a story. He's pissed off at Teddy Long for firing him. Yep. So I guess he doesn't get his revenge. Like, as much history as him and Teddy Long have, you would have thought after Johnny rehired him, Johnny would put him on the team. And SmackDown, I'm just so confused because you got so many guys on SmackDown that they could put on a team that are not doing anything like Justin Gabriel, um... Hell, I even say the fucking Usos. The Usos, Trent Beretta, somebody, I mean. Tyson Kidd. Thank you. Anybody. He's, see, the thing is, I think John Laurinaitis' team should have been everybody who Teddy Long pissed off over the years who still works there. Yeah. Yeah. Any person who's still a heel who he pissed off. Like, obviously, you're going to keep Otunga on that team. But Christian, Mark Henry, have history with him. They make sense being on that team. Drew McIntyre, damn sure, should have been on that team. Alberto Del Rio, if he's clear to wrestle, should be on that team because him and Teddy have history. Right. And not only that, but if you look at continuity, which WWE sometimes ignores, at the Elimination Chamber pay-per-view, Christian... Mark Henry and Del Rio all showed up to say that John Laurinaitis should run both shows. Exactly. Yeah. And not only that, now that I think about it, Jack Swagger and Dolph Ziggler have history with Teddy Long. Mm, true. Because he Cause was the, main the one reason who stripped why, Dolph. Yes. And another reason why Jack Swagger lost his title is because he put him in the ring with Rey Mysterio. So mm-hmm. they all have some type of history, but it's just like, when I look at the SmackDown team, it's, you know, maybe it's me that I think that how you have the Raw team that is guys that are pissed off at Teddy, and they're moving on to Raw because they want bigger and better things. They're the stars. SmackDown team should have been the guys that are sticking with Teddy and probably have never got that push from being on Raw, like... Kofi Kingston. Kurt oh. Hawkins. I mean, even though Kurt and Tyler Rex are heels, they hate John Laurinaitis because I remember reading something on Twitter that, like, basically, screw him. Yeah. Teddy did yeah. more for us than he did. Yeah. yeah. The, only, the only time they've been on Raw was to get squashed by Brodus Clay. Yeah, it should exactly. totally be. Team SmackDown should totally be, like, the underdogs that have been. They went to Raw thinking they're going to get a better opportunity. Instead, they got shitted on and they're back on SmackDown like Justin Gabriel. Yeah. Um, I even say Heath Slater, the Usos, Tyson Kidd, all those guys that are not doing anything, put them in that match. Well, I've got two questions before we move on. Uh, first, I'm going to ask... If Alberto Del Rio is rumored to be on Team Laurinaitis, and if he will be the the sixth man on that team, who fills up the sixth spot on Team Teddy? Like, is is there any babyface that's popular enough, whether main event or mid card level, that can fit that role? Um, Evan Bourne, Ray Mysterio. Right, but Sin Cara. I mean, 
<laughs> okay, let's look at healthy superstars. Well, I'm just throwing these out there because there is nobody else you can I mean, say because everybody else that is popular is involved in something. Yeah, and like the undercard guys who they have that are popular, they leave on NXT. Well, Kentucky's yeah. starting to get that lead out there. Well, I guess Ooh. the only name yeah, that would make you. sense at this point is Evan Bourne, but he hasn't even been back on TV Ooh. yet. Unless I got a good, surprised. I got a good, I got a good name that would be perfect. Who? If they were going through the route of guys that were on Raw and didn't get nowhere and got sent to SmackDown, getting somewhere better, Alex Riley. Hmm. Come on. Maybe. Something unless they, to do for unless, a kid. Or how about they bring in a hired muscle and bring in Mason Ryan? <laughs> He's about as bad as the tree, but I, could, <laughs> I don't know. I mean, I could see because he was supposed to be the next big thing on Raw, and last time we saw him was when. And, him- and I'm not counting superstars. Ah, actually, you beat me to it. Actually, you're thinking good, Nick, because him and Alex Riley are tag team partners now. There we go. <laughs> yes. All right, well, one final question quickly. Do you agree that it's Team Teddy versus Team Johnny, or should it be Team SmackDown versus Team Raw? Actually, it should be Team Teddy versus Team Johnny because it's not the whole entire brands going at each other. Right. Everybody else can give less a fuck. I mean, if it was about whose show was superior, then I would say Team Raw versus Team SmackDown, but it's about who's trying to control both shows, so and it plus, makes sense the way it's going. And plus, if it was each brand going after each brand, then um, certain people on Team Johnny would be on Team SmackDown. <laughs> Fighting for their Very own. True. Exactly, because Booker T said earlier that oh Mark, God, him. Mark Henry should be rooting for the home team, so to speak, and represent SmackDown. And Michael Cole did point it out to him that it's not SmackDown versus Raw. Leave it to Cole to make logical sense. <sighs> Booker, Booker, Booker. Well, Booker, we know, is a hot mess, and he no, he continues he's more than it. A hot mess. He continues it this week when AJ took on Brie Bella. Now, I forgot to mention this last week, but I just want to point out Booker T sounds really stupid. Okay, and I love Booker T's character, but he just sounds like an idiot when he comes off saying that AJ doesn't want to be in this match. Daniel Bryan put her in this match. She does not want to be in this. And Michael Cole and Josh Matthews point out, AJ is a competitor. She's a wrestler. This is what they do for a living. And this week, Booker continues the fact that uh, AJ is, is, you know, under Daniel Bryan's control. Whatever. She has a match. I mean, she should just be happy about that. Thank you. She ain't wrestled for how many months? And... Now she finally getting a match. She ain't complaining. Booker's crying over spilt milk. He need well, to go AJ- re hooked on phonics and get it together. Yeah. AJ defeats the other Bella for the second week. And how weird is it that <sighs> Daniel Bryan's on screen girlfriend is in a match against his off screen girlfriend? Because if you look at it how the hell does Brief Bella feel about this? Watching them have a kiss before the match begins. You're standing across the ring and you're watching your boyfriend kiss another girl. How do you think I feel? <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure it felt just as bad when you were watching Kofi Kingston versus Alberto Del Rio when they were your boyfriend and husband at the time. <laughs> It's been a rough week for Sierra. Yes, it has. Oh, how did the sale go? Hello? Yeah, um, someone's going to have to fill me in here. What? What? 
how did Justin's tribe do with the sale? (laughs) 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 Moving on. (laughs) Really? That's all I'm saying. (laughs) All right, well, uh, let's just move on from there. Uh, (laughs) The all American American Jack Swagger took on Long Island Ice Z Jack Swagger. Oh, wait. Lillian Garcia screwed up again. I'm sorry. It was Zack Ryder. <sighs> Poor Lillian. What is going on? Lillian botches a lot lately. Why is she there? Why? Why is she there? You, you know what? Just to break in, um, with, with that botch, did you happen to hear what happened after Raw, or after the SmackDown tapings? Yeah, I read up on yeah. that. I thought I'd I thought I'd bring that up for a second because that seems pretty relevant for those who haven't heard. Um, I actually heard this uh, from our former um, Angry Marks Podcast Network associate, Danny Dadamo, the original diva of the network, and she reported that uh, af- what happened uh, after the show was John Cena brought out. Uh, Tony Kimel, and then uh, introduced him as a real professional, and then started ribbing him by cutting off his mic during the introductions. And apparently, all this was to embarrass Lillian Garcia. Yeah, that, that was to uh, John Cena did that to make Tony, or he took the microphone himself and announced Long Island Ice Z Zack Ryder. And Lillian has has had a lot of trouble lately with her announcing. She's had a couple of botches uh, last week announcing David Otunga, but she forgot John Laurinaitis' title. She just simply was like, in a, a talent relations, John Laurinaitis, she's stumbling a lot now. But, but still. She's been doing this for years. I know, but I'm saying yeah. a lot more now. But still, that 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 seems unprofessional to me to go out and, and make fun of your your colleague for doing that. Yeah. On top of that, yeah. John Cena is the yeah. face of the Be a Star campaign, and he's out there being just as much a bully as the people he's complaining about. I don't know. Is it me or you know? I don't know if Lillian is over there sipping on the same shit as Chimmel was sipping on when he was doing SmackDown announcing. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> but she is getting, she's getting at his level. I mean, a couple weeks ago, she busted her ass on the way to the ring. And, mm. you know, the other week she was walking to the ring and her shoes flew off. And I broke. don't know. <laughs> yeah, and I, I, don't, I don't know what's going on. Something just ain't right. <laughs> and it's weird because, like, I remember back in, like, early 2000s, she used to, like, mess up every now and then. But lately, it seems like she's either been miscued with something or forget someone's name. It's kind of like, I understand sometimes you mess up, but you announce the same damn thing every week. Yeah. Well, I think I think what happened was, and I look back at it, and I can see, you know, it was obviously an honest mistake, but she never announced Jack Swagger on the way to the ring. So when Zack Ryder came out, she, you know, started with the whole introduction of Zack Ryder, called him Long Island Ice Z is the nickname, probably looked over at Jack Swagger and said his name by accident. I mean, that that's happened to me. I, I've, you know... I'll be saying something and I'll get a glimpse of reading something and I'll end up saying that when it has nothing to do with the first part of the sentence. I mean, I, yeah. I, that's the only way I can, you know, I can vouch for her on that, but that's, you know, there was no correction made or anything. And no. the whole John Cena bit at the end, it was ribbing, most likely not necessary. But you, I don't know. You really I mean, can't, you really can't, blame anybody for that right but at the same time they rip her all the time like even if she doesn't botch they still find some way to make fun of her 
I just, now, I don't know. Maybe it's just that, you know, she's gotten back to Nelson. She hasn't done it in quite some time. And she's got the nerves going again. Maybe, you know, she wants to take a break again. Well, that actually brings up my question. Do you think Maybe. that... Do you think that um, she is announced to be singing America the Beautiful at WrestleMania? Do you think she's uh, gone after WrestleMania? If she um, needs that break, yeah. Because I think she is leaving because they're grooming girls down at FCW to announce up on the main shows. Even though some of them chicks don't need to talk because they're god-awful. Yeah, but... They've been grooming a lot of them, and well, I don't I'm know sure. if they're about to replace her or what's going on. Well, I'm sure if they're brought up, they'll be ring announcing for NXT, because you can always bring Tony Chimmel back up to SmackDown. Oh, dear God, I can't stand his voice. <laughs> <laughs> I, I will admit, I, I miss Tony Chimmel's uh, cracking of the voice when he announces Edge to the ring. I don't. But see, the weird thing is, if she does leave and Tony Chimmel comes back up to SmackDown, they're going to do the same thing and embarrass him like they always do. Yeah. So, it, I mean, it doesn't matter who that they put on SmackDown. Michael Cole's going to make fun of them. They may end up botching. Yeah. Because, I mean, Justin Roberts even messes up sometimes on Raw. I don't like his voice either. <laughs> well, I, I think I think at this point Justin Roberts is the better or the best of all at this point. Yeah. I, just, How about we just have Howard Finkel come and announce people? Oh God, I miss Fink. Well, back to the match of Swagger and Ryder. I think it was a good back and forth. Um, these singles matches are obviously the build for the. Team versus team, big match. Zack Ryder got the win. Hornswoggle was there waving the flag around. Chase Vicky Guerrero onto the apron. And Swagger was distracted long enough for Zack to hit the Rough Rider and get the win. Hmm. So, as of right at this point on SmackDown, Team Teddy is 1-1, one and one, just like Team Johnny from representatives on, on their side. It was a good match. It was to the point, to an extent, and obviously they most likely weren't going to give Zach a clean win. So, especially with Vicky and Crazy Boy out there. Well, from there we had a interview at one oh nine p.m. Apparently. Matt Stryker stopped Cody Rhodes in the hallway and interviewed him. Cody Rhodes said he loves embarrassing the big show and he will embarrass him at WrestleMania. Then that led to one of my favorite matches of the night, Big Show versus Kane. I loved the way this match went out. They, Since the bell rang, they were brawling. Punches and uppercuts double clothesline, DDT, shoulder tackles, choke slam. I mean, this was a great back and forth match between two big men. Yeah. It I mean, I enjoyed the match cuz it was pretty much just a fight. And every once in a while you need just a fight on during a match. I mean, it didn't do anything per se between the two of them. It was mainly to get the opportunity to for them to further their feuds later on. Right. Mm-hmm. And Cody Rhodes attacked Big Show, causing a disqualification. Big Show chased him off. So that left Kane in the middle of the ring to turn around right into a surprise RKO. And I'm actually enjoying this feud of Randy and Kane and Cody and Big Show more than 
Daniel Bryan and Sheamus. What do you think? Uh, I can see that. I mean, because that feud has history, and the two of them. I mean, it could be an interesting match at Mania between the two of them because they never, like, besides that one match, they never really interacted. So it'll be something fresh and something different. Now, I'm sh- from there we go to, I'm sure, which was the favorite moment of both of you. <laughs> you had this sighting of the Funkasaurus, Brodus Clay. That's and not my favorite course, moment. And See, of course, his dancers. <sighs> I can do without Brodus Clay. Just have Naomi and Cameron, and Cameron. just come out there and dance. And I'd be good. Yeah. I, I can do without Brodus Clay too because I don't like him. I, I can't stand him. I never liked him when he was on Superstars. This new gimmick he has, it it's working out great for him. But the guy can't dance. He has no rhythm. The dude can't even do the electric slide back and forth, left and right. You see how alone, heavy his ass is. Let alone stay on beat. <clears throat> Does he look like he's on beat? How you expect him to be on beat? Come on now. His hair. Look at his hair. Oh, God. You know, you know he ain't all there in the head. No, look at his hair. Look at his hair. He looked like a damn T-Rex. He's supposed he to. He's, he's, he's trying to look like a dinosaur with that hair. No, Funkasaurus. he legit looks like one. Because he's Funkasaurus. <laughs> no, he, he looks he like legit. the dad from Dinosaurs. He, no, looked he looks like, like that Veloc- damn baby. You look like the Velociraptor <laughs> from Jurassic Park 3. No, he looks like that baby <laughs> of the dinosaurs. Oh, See, God. I like the baby. I don't like Brodus, but I like the baby because the baby was funny. Not Brodus the mama. Just... <laughs> exactly. So, uh, who do we like more in this match, Brodus Clay or Heath Slater? I Naomi. thought you was going to ask who you like more, <laughs> Naomi or Cameron. <laughs> <laughs> no, we we know the obvious answer to that. You guys, Naomi, for Naomi. <sighs> green with envy. <laughs> Heath Slater actually had some advantage in the match. He took him out at the legs. He gave him into Gary. Brodus Clay still has the same weak ass move set that he's had. Oh God, that's terrible. He just added the elbow drop to it. I'm like, <laughs> no, no, just. No, he added the the jiggle fat. The what? <laughs> where he where he shimmies and jiggles his freaking thigh fat, so you see all the ripples in his skin. He even flexed his butt. Oh, see, I didn't see that, and I don't want to see that. I didn't notice that. They put the camera up close on it. <laughs> oh. I must have looked away or blinked or something because. <laughs> Can they find him a hobby and just let Naomi and Cameron just dance? You know, when he had the running crossbody, that was more impressive, especially as a finisher coming from a big man. But now, after it's a, hitting a T-bone suplex, which is a great wrestling move, by the way, mm-hmm. all he does is do a running splash. And Mark Henry does it. <laughs> Thank you. That used to be Mark Henry's finisher, and then he got it together and got something more impressive. And he still does it. <laughs> True. What was wrong with the crossbody? I'm done with know. Otis Clay. I don't really care about him. The dancers, I... we can we can keep the dancers as, you know, commercial break dancers or, you know, keep them around for that. Wait, speaking of Bros Clay... Wouldn't you guys see him being on Team Teddy? Yeah, but the thing is with that, he hasn't lost a match. So yeah. it's not likely he'll be on Team Teddy, especially if they're on the losing team. Yeah. See, the only way I could see him on Team Teddy would be because he would be pissed off at John Laurinaitis for delaying his debut for. Eons and eons. 
to the point where he turned into a damn dinosaur. <laughs> That's a good point, though. <laughs> Since you brought that up, I- I'd go with that. <laughs> that would make sense, but... It, it doesn't make know. sense either, because Lauren Addis was saying, oh, he- he'll be here next week. No, he'll be here next week. No, he'll be here next week. No, he's getting angry now. And now he's a dancing, smiling dinosaur. Yeah, he's not so angry. <laughs> Fuck out of here. <laughs> <laughs> but I I don't know. It's just that it's a great character. If they want to keep this as a guy that mm-hmm. we see every now and then, you know. We always have those characters in the past where we see them every now and then. You know, they pop up just to get a grip pop and have a short match and they go on about their business. But if they wanted to actually make him a serious character where people actually get invested in him, then they have to do more with this guy. They have to have longer matches. You know, give him somebody as a serious competitor. No more Heath Slater. Because I'm at the point where Heath Slater needs something to do. He does. I'm tired of seeing him being squashed because a couple weeks ago, the match he had on NXT with Derek Bateman, that impressed the hell out of me. And the match what he had with Justin Gabriel and Superstars, that impressed me. See, I'm tired of seeing him thing. squashed. You have someone like him who's a former three-time tag team champion, and now he's job squad. Yeah. And as... Annoying as his voice is and <laughs> the crazy over the top rock star mannerisms that he has, he's good in the ring. And you need to give someone like him something to do, not just, uh, he's a jobber. We'll show him when we show him. Well, you it know, it makes no sense. They are doing the draft again this year, although there really would be no point since Raw is half of SmackDown, and SmackDown is still SmackDown. Um, Heath Slater will be drafted to Raw. That's that's pretty obvious. He should be the next United States champion. He should defeat Santino to become the United States champion. I would not mind that because that gives Slater something to do. It keeps him on TV, and with his good matches that he's had on the minor shows, this could propel him up to that uh, mid-card status and make people hate him even more. Yeah, but at the same time, who would you have him feud with besides Kofi Kingston if he's not doing the tag team thing? Kofi, Zack Ryder, Santino still keep that going. Justin mm-hmm. Gabriel. There you go. Um, Tyson Kidd. Throw yeah. him in there somewhere. Trent Beretta, if we can find him, because he's missing some fucking hell. <laughs> Kurt you know Trent anybody. Beretta's probably somewhere roaming around Florida. I mean... Doing nothing. <laughs> there is so many possibilities they can do with any of those guys. They just have to pull their heads out their asses and do it. No, they just- exactly. They're just so focused on WrestleMania, they're not paying attention to everything else going on. Yeah. But the funny thing is, I watched NXT this week. I mean, I watch it almost every week. And Tyson Kidd is having a feud with Michael McGillicuddy. And that's impressing me more than anything on this building for WrestleMania. I gotta watch NXT. Yeah. And I mean, it's a good show. Mm -hmm. Some of the storylines, you're like, okay, it's time to move on. Like the whole (laughs) Caitlyn, Derek Bateman, Johnny Curtis, Maxine thing. Oh, no. This week was the ultimate (laughs) one child even involving chloroform in this. But, you know, they have those storylines where you think, oh, God, is Vince Russo writing this shit? But... The action and stuff, I can't complain because they put on a decent show, but... Yeah. I and just the funny hope, thing, the funny thing just, is, 
some of those storylines they're so ridiculous, but they play the role so convincingly. Are they still doing those camera angles from up above? Mm, no. Nah. Oh, that was that was a creative part of NXT. They only do it when Justin Gabriel does his finisher. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, but and right now they have, up close. <laughs> <laughs> but right now they have Maxine trying to flirt with Regal to get her self off of NXT because she's like, I'm sick of the show. I'm sick of these stupid people. Girl, we've been I- tired for years. Well, Thank Regal you. is actually one of the guys who's saying that Maxine could be brought up to the main shows. Yeah. And see, I like him on that show because he's backing people and saying, like, this is somebody the fans need to look out for, those type of things. Putting over the talent where you have someone like Triple H who's like, we're the end of an error. Nobody in the back is worth anything. Blah, blah, blah. <laughs> you know, we're ending the era, but, you know, there's other people that was a part of the era that works here still, but oh, never mind them. <laughs> yeah, like Mark Henry and Kane are like, to hell with the two of them. Yeah, and like Big yeah. Show is not there either. <laughs> yeah. They, they, end of an era, they mean nobody before the year of 1995. <laughs> What <laughs> exactly? And but see, Mark Henry was there in 1994, <laughs> and Triple H didn't come till like 96, 97. <laughs> no, he was there in 93. He, he had a pompous persona. Yeah, that purebred Hunter Hearst Helmsley thing. Yeah, yeah, Hunter Hearst Hensley was come and go, <laughs> but still, come on. In. When I yeah. think of 93, I think of Lex Luger now. <laughs> Not Hunter Hearst. <laughs> well, getting back to SmackDown, Great Khali took on Dolph Ziggler, which was a pretty... It wasn't actually a one-sided match. Ziggler drop-kicked him in the knees, hit an elbow drop, and he was actually in control half the match. He ducked the uh, big chop on the head. He ducked that move and went for a sleeper hold. And all of a sudden, the bell rang. Kali didn't tap out. Johnny frickin' Ace rang the damn bell, giving everybody a New Jersey screw job. I was confused for a second, because I'm like, why the hell is the bell ringing? <laughs> and then I see his... Yeah over there ringing the bell and Lillian is looking at him like what the hell are you doing I know and uh, but at the same time Christian was on commentary and he said since Hornswoggle is the mascot for Team Teddy Michael Cole should be the mascot for Team Johnny oh dear god and, and watch them fool, two fight and that fool talking about I'm gonna put on my orange singlet <laughs> no oh. so nobody wanna see all that flab if well, Teddy Long said that that's not how we roll around here, and he ordered Dolph Ziggler to get back in the ring or he will be counted out, which is what happened. Ref counted all the way up to 10, so Great Kali officially wins the match. Not he wins, Ziggler. He wins without pinning him. <sighs> so I guess in a sense that puts Team Teddy up 2-1 to one on SmackDown? I don't know. It's just that I ain't going to keep doing this up until the actual match. You know, we've already said this. This match is going to be a clusterfuck. <laughs> I just see it, but. Right. You know, I mean, do we have to have John Lord Nice come down there and ring the bell and talk and everything? No, we don't. Well, you know, I'm glad that Teddy Long straightened it out because. I'm sitting here thinking, once Johnny Ace grabs a mic and says, here a winner by submission, Dolph Ziggler. I'm thinking, who the hell are you? You're not running this show yet. Teddy Long, step up, be a man, and tell him that this is not your show. This is my show. And he did just that. So I'm glad that 
Teddy Long did that because otherwise he would have looked like a punk. Right. I mean, I mean Teddy's he, been punking him out the whole time. <laughs> yeah, I mean, he slapped him on Monday and I was like, well, damn. Yeah, that was hard, too. I'm like, Teddy finally grew up here. Yeah, At 60 something kind of years way. old, he decides that I got me a girl. I'm act like I got some common sense. I don't know. Me- Is it. Are either you interested in that feud at all? Um, no. Never was. I'm not interested in the 12-man match. I am interested to see Teddy Long put Johnny Ace in his place every time they get face-to-face. See, I think those parts are funny, but at the same time, I'm not... I'm not interested in Mania, and this feud, to me, just seems like it's six years too late. Well, I think it's because Johnny has not been manager of Smack of a Raw long enough for people to care. Mm, I don't think it's that. I just think it's more so the fact that people are gotten too used to the fact that why does it fucking matter? SmackDown people appear on Raw every week. You know, why not just have one person? You know, the yeah. separate brand shit does not make sense to me if you got your superstars appearing on the other brand. So then that's going to make the guy that they're pairing on the brand of think that, oh, he controls them because they're over here every week on my show. You know, it it brings back to couple of months ago when Triple H was first named as COO of WWE, yeah. he was appearing on both Raw and SmackDown saying that the job was harder than he thought. He was showing up on both shows, listening to people whine, making matches, being the guy in charge, and saying that it's not easy. Why would Teddy Long or Johnny Ace be looking forward to that? You have one show each to manage. You want to take on the responsibility of, instead of 40 superstars, 70 or 75 total. I mean, you're going to have to listen to everybody bitch to you about everything. Yeah, I mean... It just just doesn't make sense. It doesn't, but you know WWE and their kind of logic. I don't know. Hmm. It's just, it's really ass backwards. It is. If they, I don't know. I mean, if they wanted to do this, why not do it years ago? You know. I just think the whole general manager thing has been played out, and then, you know, like Nick said, we had Triple H come in not too long ago, and is basically running both shows unbeknownst to the general managers, even though we had a freaking laptop running raw, Triple H was still taking control then he leaves and now we're supposed to care about general managers? What? Yeah. I mean- we're just gonna get two of them again anyways in the future. This isn't anything important. Exactly. It's just a way to get as many superstars as you can on the WrestleMania payday. Yeah. And I mean, on that point, it makes sense. But at the same time, who cares? Because it's going to be a rushed match and it's just going to be pure chaos. Speaking of WrestleMania payday and one who's not getting one this year, The Miz teamed up with Daniel Bryan. How weird is it to see them two team up after the first season of NXT? Teamed up to face Sheamus and CM Punk. I'm glad to see CM Punk on SmackDown. You don't see it too often because he's always on Raw. 
Right. And this was the tag team main event match. And I didn't even think about that point that you brought up about them being on NXT together. I didn't even think about that. It's the pro with the student. Mm-hmm. And now yeah. they're on the same page. And it's kind of funny because, you know, two years ago when Daniel Bryan was, you know, the student, he was, you know, there, hadn't had a shot. And The Miz was top guy. And now, Daniel Bryan's top guy, and Miz is lucky to get a match. Yeah. So it's kind of like karma in a way, because remember he told Daniel Bryan, you'll never get anywhere? And Mm -hmm. look at him. Dude, you're the one that's looking for a match. I have a match at Mania. It's like, no, he's looking to keep his job, is what he's looking for. Yeah, this it, the guy that goes from being put on the pre-show the year before, fired, is part of one of the main events. And the guy that was part of the main event, it does not have anything to do. <laughs> Makes me it's wonder like, uh, what he'll do. Well, I heard that he's supposed to interfere in one of the matches at the pay-per-view. You know, so many things have been rumored for what Biz is doing. Interfering with a match is not far from it. But interfering with The Rock and Cena does not need to happen. Now, it's also been rumored that. that... Yeah, it's also been rumored Miz will face Brodus Clay at WrestleMania. Who knows? At this point, if Miz is on WrestleMania, I'll be surprised. Because he's in so much heat. He's, you know, in trouble. He's on a losing streak. Which, by the way, Miz lost another match. He was the one who took the pinfall after getting kicked in the face by Sheamus. Uh, The guy has not won since... Shit, I can't remember the last time the Miz won a match. Two months ago? Uh, I have no idea. Um, I don't even know. I mean, hell, I mean, he was the last guy pinned in the Elimination Chamber. He's been getting losses on Raw and SmackDown, tag team or singles matches. Did he even win a match before Elimination Chamber? See, I can't remember. I don't know. Like like you said earlier, there's so many rumors going around about The Miz in general, so we have no clear indication what they're doing with him. But I don't... Unless he interferes in something or they randomly decide to give him a match where he, like, calls someone out and... They come out and beat the crap out of him. I don't see him. I don't see what they do with him. Besides eventually quietly releasing him. You know, I think, I think we've all heard a redundant rumor of him being a part of Team Teddy and screwing over John Moore and I's team. Or him being part of Team Teddy and screwing over Team Teddy. You know... No one knows at this point what they're doing with The Miz or if he's having a match. And the chances are, if he doesn't have a match, he doesn't have a match. You know, maybe it's just a thing of maybe they figure, you know, we exposed this guy so much the year before and pretty much the year before that. Maybe we need to give him a rest because now you got, you know, you got Randy Orton, John Cena... You got The Rock there for the time being. Um, Alberto Del Rio is back in the fold. Um, Christian, Big Show. Cody Rhodes is getting up there. Dolph Ziggler is back up there. And Kane. you got so many. Kane is there when he feels like he has an issue. Um, Mark Henry. Under- Mark Henry. Um, Undertaker's there for five more minutes. Um, Triple H is there <laughs> for another five more minutes. 
um, Shawn Michaels is there to count. And you've had so many guys <laughs> there that maybe they're like, you know, he, if we put the Miz in here, we're not going to have any room to make this guy important because it's too many fucking guys. And plus another thing in the WWE right now, there is too many goddamn heels. Everybody is a heel to me. Yeah. Yeah. It's too much. You know, and it, the bad thing about it is the Miz, he had the character of where he was better than everybody. He's the typical heel of I'm better than you. I'm awesome. You know, bragging a lot. Well, now you can't really have that because you got freaking Daniel Bryan running around saying yes, yes, yes. And he thinks he's better than everyone because he's a vegan. Then you got freaking Chris Jericho who says he's better than anyone and anything. And then you got Christian who's back who's going to get back to his whining and crap. And, you know, you got Alberto Del Rio who's better than everyone because he's rich. And it's too many of the same fucking thing. Very, very true. Like, I feel they need to shake it up and dramatically switch things. Some people need to turn face. Some people need to turn heel. Yeah. To I mean, freshen things up. I mean, I'm not saying for let's turn mid's face because... No. You know, because child... No one's going to buy that. No, I'm not saying let's do that because if we turned him face, then it's just... He's going to be like our truth right now. In limbo, not going any further. <sighs> So, it's best to leave him heal, but if you're going to keep him heal, you need to separate him from everybody else that's doing the same fucking thing. Yeah. Because it's like identity crisis right now. It is. When you have too much of the same stuff, nothing rises to the top, everything. Yeah. Just settles. And I think that's what my issue is with Mania is... Everything just feels like it's stagnant and it's just been the same shit since the Royal Rumble, pretty much. Like, a couple of surprise things have happened, few situations changed, but all in all, it's just the same shit, different day. Pretty much, but Mania is like, this year Mania is focused on three matches really but it's more so to me they're focused on one particular match which is the Rock and Cena you know you got your two other matches which is Taker versus Triple H with Shawn Michaels and then you have you know Chris Jericho and CM Punk and then you know I don't even consider Daniel Bryan versus Sheamus in there because you know it's kind of like it's been forgotten this whole time and you know years ago WWE will focus their entire mania on one match and everything, all the other matches and stuff will be built around that match. That that match would be the main focus. Now, it's like they have all this stuff going on. And they just don't know what they're doing. You know, like the Divas match is just out of nowhere. Um, This Teddy versus Johnny match is out of nowhere. It's just like they're just throwing things together for the hell of it, because they have four hours. Yeah. I feel like anything that's not Rock vs. Cena or Taker vs. Hunter, it's okay, we just need some spot fillers, so we'll throw this in, throw this in, and nothing is getting the attention that it deserves. Like the, um, Championship matches, because those four individuals are going to be there after Mania for the foreseeable future. Those two matches should have some precedence on the card. It should have the build that makes me go, oh my god, I have to watch SmackDown to make sure that such and such gets an edge over whoever and I have to Watch Mania because I have to know who's going to win and who's going to be my champion. I don't get that from Raw or SmackDown. You know, you bring up all good points because that's exactly how I feel right now. 
It's just that, so, you know, and they even have an IC title match. And it's not important at all. <laughs> it's just, I right. don't know. But yet it's more interesting. That. Yeah, it's interesting, but it's at the mm. same time, you know, because they're focused on one fucking match. It's like, you know, let's just throw this on here because we have to give Big Show something to do. Right. And you know. I hate the fact that title matches aren't getting emphasis for being an actual title match. It's like, oh, this match is for the whatever title and the guys are bickering over well, I'm a vegan. Well, you're being a jackass, so I'm just going to kick your teeth down your throat. Or I ain't best in the world. No, I ain't best in the world. Who gives a fuck? You're fighting for a belt. Thank you. Or you're just a hot mess at WrestleMania, so I'm just going to keep clowning you. Make the belt mean something, because I remember back when, where everyone was fighting for a title, and the few could start over something stupid, but you knew it was for the title, and you're like, oh snap, I gotta see this title match. Yep. Now It's, it's sad. <laughs> now it's more so about entertaining and how many tweets you get. <sighs> Twitter. Twitter, Twitter, Twitter. Well, I really have nothing else to add. You guys hit every nail on the head right there. So, what do you say we end the show from here? Unless there's anything else to bring up. Oh, mm. Eve, lo- Eve in that dress. Oh, dear Jesus. <laughs> yeah, one, la- one last thing to mention. Eve played Zack Ryder yet again, wearing some fine-ass dress. Oh, God, where does she get her dresses? <laughs> I don't know, but she just needs to keep wearing dresses. Oh, God. Yes. Oh, and real quick, Nick, what did you think of um, the Divas match on Superstars? Um, Beth and Eve versus Tamina and Natalia. Jeez. It was... It was okay. I mean, it was a good match for Beth and Eve. It was their warm-up match basically. Yeah. It was okay. I mean, it was weird to see Natalia jogging around the ring, prancing and smiling. Yeah. Wait. I don't know. I, I, it, it was it was what it was. I really have neither here nor there to say about that. You know, the only thing I said to Jeff when I was watching the match is, you know, apparently to some people... Natalia is face. She's not a face because she's still associated with Beth Phoenix. And, you know, going into this match, I'm like, why is she team with Tamina? Because you guys were just feuding on and on on SmackDown and Superstars. And then commentators will say, they go, Natalia's team with Tamina to give Beth for a warm up match. And I'm like, okay, it's friendly competition. If they wanted to turn Natalia face, they had the perfect way to do it. With Natalia playing with Beth, and Beth tells her, Natalia, get out the ring. I'm not fighting you. Gets out the ring, gets back in the ring, rolls Beth up. And then she just keeps rolling Beth up. Keeps coming after Beth until Beth realizes she's serious. If they wanted to turn her face, that was the perfect way to do it because she did it right there. Instead, yeah. we go back to their friends. It makes well, no common sense. I'll do you one better. They did say that Natalia is giving Beth a warm-up match and that yeah. she's only teaming with Tamina for the spirit of competition. But yet, right after they said that, Natalia and Tamina high-five each other. Yes, like they're friends. Yeah. That, I'm like, did you not remember when she was Super kicking your jaw in the row 13E. Right. That's where I smell bullshit. Natalia's a face. People deal with it. And, and, you know, and you know what 
it confuses me is on the house shows. I know house shows don't matter, but I think if you're doing something on TV, it should translate to house shows. The house shows, the night before they did Superstars, Beth and Natalia were teaming as heels. Heels. Eve was teaming with Kelly Kelly as faces. What is going... I just think that they don't know what they're doing. <laughs> it just Yeah. I think that they just said, screw it, we'll put a Mania match together, and then post-Mania we'll go from there. It was just... I was just confused. <laughs> well, there you have it. WWE <laughs> confusing people. I think we just found our new pay-per-view title. <laughs> I've been confused. I've been confused since 2002. <laughs> <laughs> so many things make no sense, but I've come to expect that from WWE. And now, Skittles.com presents WWE Confusion live <laughs> on pay-per-view. <laughs> I was like, wait, uh, what the hell? Live in a mental hospital near you. I thought that was another commercial. <laughs> I know, I did too. <laughs> That's how good our producer is. Hey, hey. It's not as bad as the other night when DMX started talking while I was talking. Oh. Up Kevin, in here? You, you have to play that. <laughs> uh, I don't have that drop on this computer. Are you out your mind? <laughs> I know. It was a random moment. <laughs> Well, I think that's going to do it for this week's edition of SmackDown Rundown. Sierra, I'd like to thank you once again for joining us this week. So do you want to give any plugs or anything for Ring the Bell this, next week to fans to look forward to? Um, first and foremost, um, as you all know, my Angry Marquee news feeds, retros, spotlights will be back up next week. I've been very busy. Um, also... Ring the bell next week, Tuesday night at 9. I believe we are previewing WrestleMania. I believe. Probably. I don't know. I believe. It depends on what Frank wants to do. (laughs) We'll figure this out. Yeah, I'm sure you guys will. Who knows? Hell, we'll all be previewing WrestleMania next week. <laughs> yep. You can expect that on um Monday mm-hmm. night. Raw reaction mm-hmm. right after Monday Night Raw. Host Alex <sighs> Goff and our own producer, Killer Kev. I'm sure we'll give they'll give their predictions and previews for WrestleMania. Ring the bell on Tuesday. Sierra and Frank Vaughn. And whoever else shows up will give their predictions. Thursday night AMP. They gave their predictions last night because next week, next Thursday on the Thursday night AMP, they will interview Diamond Dallas Page. You don't want to miss that, people. And also, next Friday, King J and I will review or preview WrestleMania ourselves. So, a great week for Angry Marks Network. Uh, very busy WrestleMania weekend. You don't want to miss all the action we have for you. King J, any last words? Oh, thanks for Sierra being on. Thanks for K- Kilika for producing the show, as always. I should have a new article up on Sunday. It depends on if I have to commit murder with my roommate or not. Oh, dear um, Jesus. I don't know if he cleaned the dorm and I ain't in the mood. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> I ain't been there in two weeks, so I don't know. Um, and that's it. <laughs> you know what? I just thought of something else we might have to preview next week, but I don't know. <laughs> what? <sighs> Ring of Honor? Oh... Yeah, like I said, it's a very busy weekend. (laughs) (laughs) It's going to be a busy week on AngryMarks.com. It's a very busy weekend next week. 
Yes, there's also uh, Ring of Honor, Dragon Gate USA, Bellator. Oh my God, you guys! If you are not keeping up with what's going on, Angry Marks will have the coverage for you. Yes, it's going to be a big week. Whew. It's going to be a busy week. <laughs> yeah, so gather up, call your friends, get some snacks and some pizza or whatever. Sit yourself down and watch some great shows this weekend. So for our guest, Ciara, for producer Killer Kevin, for my co-host King J, this is Nikolai signing out, telling you we'll see you next week here on the Angry Marks Podcast Network. Good night, everybody.